Welcome back, Mr. Weiser. North Carolina Math 1 released items. Question number six, calculator inactive. A company models its net income in thousands of dollars with the function f of x equals 9x squared minus 54x minus 144, where x is the number of units of its product sold. How many units of its product does the company need to sell in order for the net income to equal zero? Yes, you should pause this video and try it on your own. All right, you got to pause. Here we go. So in this problem here, it says the net income should equal zero. So right here, your clue is we want this stuff to equal zero. So there's a lot of extra fluff on there, but they want to know the value of x, essentially, that's going to make that equal to zero. So here is your equation. Nine x squared minus fifty four x minus one forty four equals zero. Now, any reasonable person would pick up a calculator and just see where it crosses the x axis. But we don't have that luxury as this being calculator inactive. So we're going to have to figure out how can we reduce this divide factor. And the first thing I'm going to look at is there's a there's a nine there and a fifty four, and I think maybe those are divisible by nine. So we're going to see if we can divide out. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to I'm going to test nine to see if it's a GCF. So is 54 divided by nine going to give you like a whole number? And it turns out, yeah, 54 divided by nine is six. So what about 144 divided by nine? So that's going to be six. What is that? Oh, let's see. I can't do that in my head, can I? Maybe nine goes into 14 once. 1 times 9 is 9. 14 minus 9 is 5. Oh, 9 goes into 54 16 times. So why did I do all that? Well, I have a GCF. Greatest common factor. And that greatest common factor is going to be 9. See, these are all divisible by 9. So if I divide that out and bring it on the outside, then what's what's left, What I what I get is the reduced form x squared. It's important to keep your sign. So minus 54 divided by minus 6, 6x. Six 144 divided by 9, 16. So minus 16 equals 0. Now, why did I go through all that trouble? Well, because when you have a coefficient out for outside that doesn't have an x in it, you can get rid of it. Okay. So if I'm trying to solve this for zero, I can simply divide both sides by nine, but I'm not going to do anything with it right now. My focus right now is on this trinomial and the fact that it's factorable. Okay. So this is a, you can do this as an AC method, but, um, but honestly with this one, I look at my C value and I look at that negative 16 and I try to think, can I come up with some numbers? such that they multiply to negative 16, but they add to the number here, negative six. That's your B value. So they got to multiply to the C value and add to the B value. And so start thinking about some, some, some common pairs. You know, how do we break up 16? Start with things that multiply to that number. So you can do two and eight, uh, four and four, and one and 16. But our goal is to get A, the 16 to be negative, which means that one of those numbers is going to be negative. And B, um, I want them to add to negative 6. So if I throw like a negative out here, um, if I add these together, 2 plus negative 8, that's going to be like negative 8 plus 2 or 8 minus 2 with a negative. Um, that's going to be negative 6, which is what I'm looking for. If I had the negative with the 2, the answer would be 6. Now, also, 2 times negative 8 is equal to negative 16. So I've met the numbers that work. So what do I do with those is I look at 2, positive 2, and I look at negative 8 as the numbers in the trinomial. So I have a two factors. Uh, I said trinomial, I meant binomial. So I have two factors. 
Um, oh, stop. So inside the breakdown of these, you're going to get x plus 2, since that's a 2, and x minus 8. Don't forget your equals 0. And don't forget this 9 out front. Actually, you can forget it in this case, but I want to know that that's equivalent to that expression up above. Now, when you're setting your zeros, you're going to really just take all your factors and equal to zero, except when it's a GCF like this, that doesn't really do anything here. So you can cross out the nine or divide the nine out. Um, you're going to say x plus two equals zero and x minus eight equals zero. You're going to solve both of those for x. And so one of your solutions is going to be x equals negative 2. And one of your solutions is going to be x equals 8. Now think realistically. This is a word problem. We're talking about money. Um, a company models its net income in thousands of dollars with the function f of x equals blah, blah, blah. x is the number of units. Can you have a negative number of units? No, can't be negative. So your real answer is going to be 8. So since it can't be negative, we're going to rule out that negative 2. And so the answer to this question, how many units of its product does the company need to sell in order for the net income to equal 0, it's 8. 8 units. I don't know outside of using technology and a quicker approach. Um, however, if, you, if you're good at plugging numbers in and just kind of keeping track, Maybe you could come up with that number eventually. But with these numbers like 54 and uh, 144, it's really not easy to do mental math with. So the answer to this question would be just eight. Thank you for watching.